Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die Radio. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. Before we get started on the show, just an announcement. If you don't know, our friends at IANS, which is the International Association for Near-Death Studies, are having their yearly conference. This year will be online due to COVID-19 being out in the world and no one traveling. August 14th through 16th, it's all about the afterlife with over 60 presenters and panelists, including myself and our guest today. There are many different topics, like I said, afterlife, near-death experiences, grief, living a great life, and it's a low price. You'll get the videos on demand after the event if you can't join live. So you can visit IANDS.org to find out more, which is I-A-N-D-S. Dot org. Now, about our great guest. Her name is Ellen Wheelton. She's a light worker, transpersonal and music therapist, healer, workshop presenter, and educator who uses numerous modalities such as music, sound bowls, essential oils, meditation, and more. Her passion for healing was born out of her near death experience when she was just 12 years old. Ellen has presented at major universities, retreats, medical facilities, conferences, therapy centers, and she's also an esteemed instructor for Music Therapy Ed, where she instructs an online course about music-assisted imagery. She also hosts a spiritual series on Awake TV. Ellen's goal is to help people use music and imagery as a tool to connect with something greater recognize our untapped potential, and discover how to lead an inspired, content, and harmonious life. You can find out much more about her on her website, which is wellnessmusictherapy.com. Ellen Wheelton, welcome to We Don't Die Radio. Well, thank you. It's so nice to be here. Really thrilled and just, I'm not, that we've not, we've not yet met in person, but just by your smile, I know we'd be friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm happy to be here and share my story. And it's it's an honor to be here with you. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. We all are. Well, let's find out a little bit about you. You're coming to us from the West Coast in the United States. Am I correct? That's correct. I live uh, just north of San Diego, and I have a wellness practice here where I, my my goal in life, as you already mentioned, is to help others connect to their higher self and to connect to the other side. And my near-death experience is part of that. So I have a private practice here, and I also work globally with people and, and go to conferences and help educate others how to do this for themselves. Pretty great. I'm looking forward mm-hmm. to hearing more about that. But let's go way back in time. Mm-hmm. Hey, do you want to tell us about being a kid and then what happened? Mm-hmm. And then you can move forward. Yes. I was a, a normal child growing up, a normal girl, loved horses and loved to ride. And when I was 12 years old, I went to my first Western lesson. I'd ridden English for so long. So I went to my first Western lesson and it turns out they didn't uh, tighten the cinch enough when I was riding and the cinch slipped and I was riding for a while underneath the horse fell off the horse, and then it reared up and kicked me in the temple, in the right temple. I was taken to a local hospital in Hillsborough, Texas, which is near to where I lived at the time, and was found that I was in a coma. So then I was taken to Waco Hospital in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and, and given a team of doctors, one of which who had worked on JFK, oddly enough. But I was in the coma for five days and my parents were told to try and inspire my brain to kind of have some stimulation by playing movies and things like that. And that part of the story comes back later because they were playing my childhood favorite movies, Disney movies at my bedside and home movies and things. But it was from that point that I went into my near death experience and was taken to the other side. Do go on. Thank you. So Mm -hmm. Basically, I 
found myself on a raft and the raft was wooden and was floating on kind of what I would call pink clouds. And in front of me was who I knew to be Jesus because that's the faith that I grew up in. And on my left, there was a man who was young and thin and bald with long brown robes. And I didn't know who he was, but he felt familiar and comfortable and safe to me, almost as if he were protecting me. And I was on this space with them and felt completely loved just before moving into this place of light. So I went from the raft into this place of being surrounded by white light, bright light, but also colors and imagine like wonderful, beautiful colors all around, music playing. And then that was short lived because at some point I felt this light around my body, which wasn't my real body, but was my light body. It felt warm and weighted and beautiful and kind of like a comforting hug, right? And then I just melted into and became the love. Everything else went away. And I was just completely one with this light and this love. And it was the most beautifully profound experience of of my life. But I can't even say it was an experience I had in my life because it was an otherworldly experience. And then I don't know how long I was there. I don't know how long I was connected, but I was taken back to the raft. And it was on that raft that I was connected with so much information about not only my path, but our path as humans and why we're here. And then I could see the trajectory of my parents and my family And after receiving all this information, which I'll go into detail with you later, we can talk about that in a moment, I was given the choice that I could either stay there or I could live. And I remember on some level wanting to stay because I loved the connection and the love and everything else disappeared. All my human worries about everything didn't matter, right? And I recognized on that raft that they didn't matter anyway, that so much that we think about and spend our time giving energy to is not what it's about. Um, and again, I'll go into that more later, but it was then that I was taking into a, taken into a transformative, um, immersive music experience because I chose to stay and to come back. I chose to come back and I remember, I remember telling them, I want to use music for healing is kind of, I communicated through my mind and I explained, I want to be a healer. And it was at that moment that I felt an overwhelming surge of gratitude that I got to come back and I got to live. And I knew that it was a gift and I knew that I had something to give and I knew I had purpose. And that's when I was taken back into the darkness. But the darkness that I went into was a warm darkness, a comforting darkness. And I saw a music staff in the distance. It was just a staff and every note was a different color on the staff. And I could see the notes moving, but I couldn't hear anything. So I just watched it and it got closer and closer and closer, bigger and bigger until I kind of moved through the staff and it was gone. But then in its place was a very, very faint sound, almost inaudible, almost untouchable, like a little pinprick of light on the kind of down, I I point to the lower right. That's where I kind of visualize it. Tiny pinprick. And I focused so hard on that music. I just pulled it in as much as I could. It came into my mind until it was booming in my head. And I opened my eyes and there I was in the ICU. A nurse came running over and then I slipped back out of consciousness. But the next thing I remember was I was being moved to a regular bed They were calling it a miracle. They said that no other person in the state of Texas had ever survived that type of head injury at that state that I was in other than one other child. She was 14, but she was disabled for life. And and then I knew, I knew that everything, all the information I received on that raft, which was that we all have purpose. I mean, there's so much to it. And I'll I'll talk about that. But and now I live, everything that I do has to go back to that experience. Does it relate? Does it connect to that experience on the other side? And how can I help others connect to that as well? Pretty amazing. And did you like music as a kid before all this happened? I, I did. I I played piano. My mom was a piano teacher for some time. And 
I played piano and I played the flute, which is my main instrument. I threw myself into music as I recovered because I did have some, you know, word retrieval issues. Other than that, it was completely normal, but I threw myself into music. That was my outlet. And then I became a music therapist. I knew that all, all I had to do was figure out how I could use music to help others. Yeah. Pretty amazing. This is a world I don't know too much about. So I'm going to let you lead the dance, okay, (laughs) with your information. And let me just ask, how clear is that memory today of what happened when you were 12? It's the most vivid memory I have in my life. I lost all the memories before my head injury. So I remember them telling me that it was some form of amnesia. And they said, because it's unusual for someone to wake up from a coma and not have any memory, no birthdays, no first day of school, no family. So it was a concern. And I remember they said, whatever you'll get back, you'll get back in the first five years. And then after that, you won't get your memory back. So I had maybe five memories come through. My family would try to show me home videos. It would just not bring anything back. But I had a sense of people and what that gave me I could see my family member and feel their love and intuitively know that they were loving and that I loved them. And it helped me to really be able to intuitively understand people without having to know their name or their story. Um, And so, yeah, so that's kind of where it led me into this place of, you know, living through music and feeling the music and living in the music and helping others to use it as a tool for connecting to something greater. Okay, the floor is yours. I know nothing about (laughs) this. And I would just want to hear more. (laughs) Absolutely. Yes. Would you like to hear more about what I learned on the raft when I was communicating with Jesus? Okay, I'd love to tell you about that. And I'd love to tell you about who the other figure was on the raft with me, because I figured that out later in life as well. And it was pretty profound. So as I was there on the raft, there's so many things came into my knowing. I could have been there for a day. I could have been there for a million years. And I, I, it's so much information. But I remember knowing that every person here has a purpose. Everyone has a plan. We are divinely guided and led. And our goal is to surrender to that and trust that and have faith. And also to connect with our higher self so that we are living in the greatest good. And I remember, again, recognizing that all the things that we spend our mind thinking about, like that we spend our time thinking about on earth, all these worries and concerns and stresses and fears, they actually get in the way of living our purpose in our life. And I remember thinking when I came out of my coma and I was living again, I would have these thoughts and they would come into my head, you know, maybe fear or unworthiness. And I would instantly know how to let it go. And that it didn't matter. And it was false. And I lived in that knowing for so long. And I think that in this time, especially people will have these fears and they will hold them back because as we connect fear with thoughts, We actually create more of that in our lives because what we think is our reality. So that was a really big piece for me. Also, this living in gratitude was a huge part of this experience. I came out knowing that every night as I went to sleep, I needed to give thanks for this opportunity to be here. And where there is gratitude, there's no room for fear. There's no room for hate or discord. It is all love. And that's when we really feel that and we feel the expansion of our heart and we give complete gratitude for getting to be here. That is when we are truly connecting to the higher self and to source. So that was another big piece. And I recognize and have since had many messages. I've been working with what I call angelic angelic or light beings ever since I came out of my coma I will, I will see them places and around people and in formations and their, their comfort and the guidance that they give is true and real, that we really are protected and guided. And I bring those into my workshops as well, where, you know, animal meaning may come through for people or um, angels may come through light beings. And it's just beautiful to be able to witness that because I'm not the answer to your problem or anyone's problem or anyone's concerns, but I can hopefully provide a tool where you can connect to your higher self because your higher self 
is the only one that can answer for you. And I think a lot of times we get caught in our thoughts. And what my goal is, is to help people just quiet the mind, move out of the mind, move into the body, connect with light, feel the vibration of the singing bowls or the music, feel the frequency of the plants medicine that we use, and just use it to kind of reconnect with that frequency. And when we are truly in it, we can answer our own concerns and issues, right? So that's kind of where I go with my work. But what was fascinating to me was that I recognized the man on my left when I went to college. I chose to go to a Buddhist university named Naropa. It's in Boulder, Colorado. They had a a counseling program that was immersive in meditation and Buddhist philosophies, but it was an accredited program for transpersonal counseling. And when I was there walking up to my meditation class, starting to learn about being present in the moment, I saw a picture of a young, thin Buddha in brown robes. I don't remember if it was a an artist depiction or if it was, I, I don't know what it was or where it came from, who who created it, but I recognized him right away. And I said, that was, that's Buddha. Buddha was in my near-death experience. And then I felt like I had come full circle because I was getting validation that I was on the right path. And the more that I work in this world, the more validation comes through, the more that I see Buddha and Buddha and Jesus come to me and angel in my meditations. It's just profound and beautiful. And I'm so thankful that I have the ability to get to do this on this plane. It's just such a gift. How comforting that must be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine you being a kid, not having the memories, but I'm super Mm -hmm. grateful that this is so vivid. And I had asked you that question about memories because, um, as you probably know, and many of the listeners, the people that I've heard that have had these near-death experiences, whether it was when you were 5, 12, 30, it doesn't matter. It remains as one of the most vivid things, mm-hmm. better than mm-hmm. any memory. Yes. Yes. It's so clear. And what's really powerful about recalling this as the near-death experience is the feeling that you get the remembering, which is another piece of the puzzle that we have opportunities, all of us, whether you've had a near-death experience or you learn through the stories of others, or you have a spiritually transformative experience in breathwork or music and imagery or crystal bowls or a dream, right? Or a deep meditation. We have opportunities where we can remember our purpose and who we are. And even if we don't know the purpose, if we tap in regularly to our greater presence, our higher presence, which is always inside of us, we hold that source energy within our human form. We hold that love and that beauty. So if we can tap into that in whatever way we can, through whatever process we find, then we can live in more purpose and more things will start to open up and develop and come to us and help us grow. And we'll grow through abundance of love and purpose and career. It's just phenomenally beautiful. I've heard it said many, many times that all the answers are within. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. it sounds like your higher self to, you know, it's just, what is the access way to get that? Because I think many Mm -hmm. of us leave busy lives and so many times we talk about afterlife and and things like Mm -hmm. that. And so we want to believe, and part of us trusts there's a bigger picture, but how can we build that bridge to this yeah. higher self, this light being that's within? Yes. For me, it started with simple meditation and focusing on the breath. But sometimes people need more of an anchor to really connect. So what I'll do in my my daily practice is this, and it started out very simple and It took work at first for me to call in on my higher self, but now I find that it's just easier to live in that space because I practice it so often. So I practice the practice of meditation with letting go of negative thoughts, letting go of thoughts, and just being present. That's one thing. When I really need to raise my vibration and I don't have my music that I can play right then or I don't have time, I will breathe in a high-frequency essential oil which is part of my business as well. Um, And I will 
allow it to anchor in the limbic brain because certain oils can move directly into the amygdala and they can stay in the brain for two weeks. So if you anchor it with intention, not only does it raise your spiritual vibration, like my favorite is transformation oil. That's an or highest potential. As I breathe it in, I call in my higher self. You can do this in a meditation as well, but I'll call in my higher self and I will imagine the energy of my soul body and where it is. And usually it's massively huge, right? I'm a tiny point. My human body is a tiny point when connected to my soul body. I imagine the expansion of my soul body. I imagine the expansion of my heart as I breathe in the oil. And then I just call in and ask questions. Where would you have me go? What would you have me do? What would you have me say and to whom? And with those questions, and I place oils on my feet, where would you have me go? On my heart, what would you have me do? Uh, on my wrist and my throat, what would you have me say? And then I do release and surrender on the top of my head and the back of my head and to whom. So I have that ritual twice a day has pretty much changed my human life even more so. Like now I'm living in my spiritual path. So that would be an easy thing that people could do. And even if you don't have the oils, just sitting and asking those questions and calling in your higher self will bring great insight and wisdom. You sound like joy <laughs> coming out of your mouth. You sound so nice and joyful. Oh. Yes. Thank and like you. you found your passion. Yes. 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 Absolutely. And I, like others, have moments of unworthiness and fear that come in. But one thing I'm constantly reminded of is that we can shape our existence through our thoughts. So I have this funny little practice where if I have a negative thought or a fear-based thought, because I'm also a mother, and you know, as you have children, you watch them grow, you want to protect them from hurt and pain. But I'll have these fear thoughts come in and I have this little practice of imagining that they're butterflies or pick them from my head and just throw them out the window. And my kids make fun of me because they're like, mom, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, I'm just throwing that thought out because I don't need it and I don't have space for something like that. And I don't want that to come into reality, right? So I send it out. And uh, and yes, and I have been told, I was told yesterday, someone told me that uh, that they see that I bring joy into their life. <laughs> so it, thank you for saying that. I can, I can hear it. And I think we can all, all hear it in your voice. And it's interesting that you talk about smell. Cause I know, um, you know, I've heard so many things about sound and music and my mind is going to a, um, a YouTube video that I saw a movie called, mm -hmm. I think it was called alive inside and, yeah. it, and it was about people that were severely suffering from Alzheimer's, dementia, mm -hmm. that were just yes. totally checked out in life, and mm -hmm. how the sound actually mm -hmm. brought their memories back. It's the last area of the brain to go. So yes. any, anybody who's got a loved one, play some of the music from their generation, and yes. it, it lights them up. But I've never thought so much about the sense of smell and how that yeah. can broaden our sense and use that in a meditative practice oh, to it connect. Is. That's pretty You know, they say that the ascended masters each have a scent. And the power of this is that they come from plants that are earthly energy and frequencies, right? So some of these plants have frequencies that are, are, you know, unofficially clocked in over 700 megahertz, you know, Northern Lights, Black Spruce is one of those. Really? And the, the, yeah. And what's oh, interesting no. is that when we use certain oils, they have to be high frequency, organic, you know, no pesticides, like Northern Lights is grown under the Northern Lights in Canada, right? So, um, when you use these oils, they have the ability to move through the neuron. So only certain oils, right? There's some studies going on with the Minnell Center for Chemical Senses, but it shows that it's the only thing that can move through the neuron and create an electric response in the body and then into the amygdala directly are these small celled essential oils. And um, so Young Living is the brand that I use because I know that they're working with the Minnell Center and they've been in these studies. That's what NASA's choosing for their research. And that's what I've chosen too because the cell size is small enough to actually move into the brain. But um, 
it's fascinating because it really, they really can shift emotion very quickly. And the person who discovered they could move through the brain was a team of scientists that won the Nobel Prize for that finding. So when this was discovered, psychologists like me and music therapists and therapists everywhere kind of woke up and said, wait, if I can combine this with the creative process of creating music, which also stimulates the brain, which also brings memories and recall and helps uh, with calming and s- stress, right? What else can we bring in? And for me, that's what I do is trying to bring in all of these different practices, the sound, the frequency of the oils, the frequency of the vibration, and then the own power of the mind like the innate power of our mind. When we're in a deep state of relaxation and we're imagining a scenario, our body responds as if it's real. Our heart levels reduce, uh, like become more regular. Mm -hmm. Cortisol levels go down in the blood. Stress, you know, just stress markers go down. So really just whatever we can use to, to really connect the brain with intention and visualization that is the key to everything. I love it. I want to mm-hmm. ask you, Ellen, about mm-hmm. your beliefs in the afterlife. And yeah. um, could any of this be utilized connecting to the unseen world? Oh, 100%. 100%. I've seen people in my workshops and I have private sessions where when people get into that space, they actually are connecting to something similar to what I connected to. And I remember the first time I experienced music and imagery, there's something called the Bonnie method of guided imagery and music. It's a very deep transformative process that takes you into a slightly altered state, but you stay connected to present time through the music and the structure of the music. And you stay in your unconscious experience because you're deeply relaxed and trusting in the practitioner. Now, the first time I experienced this was the first time I was reconnected to what I felt like when I was in heaven. It was a glimpse of it. It was, and I call it a glimpse of heaven because it was beautiful and encompassing and I was surrounded by love and light. And so when I when I experienced that I realized this is it. This is the way that I'm going to help people experience what I experienced. They can find their own answers. And then at each level of the journey in the past 20 years cuz I got my masters in 2000, I have just added other elements that deepen the practice. And people can have this experience of connecting to their higher self. I met with someone this morning in a session, and she was taken into the clouds, reconnected with her higher self, and giving giving guidance about what she needs to do to live in her purpose. And that is absolutely, yes, you can totally be taken there. Sometimes people are taken into the universe, and they're in, one with the stars. I've had people feel like they've been lifted from their bodies, so their soul body reconnects. It's absolutely possible and wonderful. Do you have stories of people that have said that they've seen their loved ones or I mean, we all? Oh, yes, yes. You want to, can you share a little bit? Because we're all, I, I know your episode number 300 and something of the show. <laughs> so we believe in the afterlife. We want to yeah. believe we might have a new listener, but mm-hmm. we just love hearing stories. Oh, yes. And my, I, it happens every single time I do a workshop, every single time. What's interesting about this work is that not only as we meet in groups, not only do people see loved ones that have passed that have messages that relate to their intention and what they want to bring, but also people have similar experiences. So I've had sessions where one instance was this dog where there was a little, one person said, I saw a little white dog with a red bow around its neck and it was kind of fluffy and it looked like a little, I don't know what kind of dog it looked like. And the man next to her started crying. And the woman next to him started crying. And he said, that's my dog. She passed away last week. And she came to me too. And the another woman said, I saw the dog in my imagery oh, too. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, so many times animals will come through and each animal has a different meaning. So this morning I was working with someone who saw butterflies and butterflies are, you know, a form of transformation. And we went into the deep meaning of, you know, to stop taking life so seriously, you know, and wear more colorful, express yourself. And we go into the meaning of each animal and she saw bees. Bees are productivity. There's like, take on your creative process right now. You will be successful, you know? And 
then loved ones come through and those are more what I call transpersonal experiences where people move into working through issues without having to think about it, without having to know what's going on. They're just guided and led by something bigger. And um, I've had people, their grandmothers come through where they haven't seen in a while or their, or their mother or their child. And it's just so sacred and beautiful to be able to hold space for that. It doesn't happen every time. And sometimes it takes repeated practice where the trust can really be built and the practice can be developed. But yes, all every single session I do now, and it, it was not always that way, but now that comes through and every single session, the angels are now showing me different formations. So they, they'll come either behind each person in a circle or they'll come you know, completely outside of the circle in rows and rows and rows, very stoic and don't move. And there'll be some angels that have been coming to me lately or light beings that are in concentric half circles. And then there'll be three angels in front. And I remember asking the universe, well, what does this mean? Like, what am I seeing here? What does this represent? Just putting it to the universe. And then I started receiving a lot of information through meditations. And I met Lilia, a woman who called me because she said she was guided by something greater to call me. And she had a message to call me. When I met her for the first time, she gave me books. She knew nothing of this. She gave me some books for instruction, the I am discourses that by St. Germain. And she said, these are going to tell you what the angels are trying to show you. And I just cried because how would anybody know that it was the most beautiful thing. So, um, so now those teachings of light and reconnecting to love and light and our higher self, they come very deeply into my work and more is unfolding every single day. That's amazing. And you're young, so you've got a lifetime of this and a shout, <laughs> shout out to our friend Lilia. She's great. Yes. She, she has um, connected me with so many people. She's connected me with IANS and being able to mm -hmm. uh, speak on their stage and, and be part of that organization. It's oh. really wonderful. And I'm going to interview her in the next few days as well. So oh, that's wonderful. It's and about IANS, IANS is a really wonderful organization for the study of near death experiences. And, you know, I only just learned of it last year when she called me, she called me two weeks before the conference and asked me if I would come. And I said, was completely guided. Everything fell into place and I went. It was amazing to meet others who understand and have lived through similar experiences because I think we have some commonalities once we come through that. You know, we realize it's not about us. It's not about our ego and who we are. It's about something greater and being a tool and a witness to help others see that for themselves and connect to their own power. Uh, most definitely. I mm -hmm. The people that I know and at all the research, it's almost mm -hmm. like you get a glimpse of who you really are. And so what yeah. you're left with is sharing and being of service. Yes, in all exactly. Different ways. So I want to ask you, because I know you work with people, but do you, do, mm -hmm. can you work with people long distance one on one? I don't know. That it's something, yes, it's something I've been developing that I, it's working extremely well. I've been doing individual sessions. I don't have a lot of availability, but um, I am, if I am available for individual sessions with the bowls and my process, which uses intention, frequency, bowls, vibration, and imagery and music to help people connect. And it's a beautiful process. And I, I love my work. I also have um, a Facebook community for people who want to learn more about music therapy and essential oils, and they're interested in frequency. And that's on Facebook. I have a group that's called that. And on Instagram, I have music therapy for wellness, uh, music therapy and essential oils on Instagram. Um, and what is so, the one on yeah. Facebook? Music therapy and essential oils. Okay. And I have, I have a couple of publications that have just come out. The St. Edward's publication that was just released. I have an article there about how practitioners can work with experiencers so as not to undervalue the experience. They can really support people. And I'm, Working with Jack Canfield, I was chosen as one of his, he wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul. Yes. And he's a, a, a national best-selling artist. He chose me as one of six presenters for an emotional reset that he just completed. And then he chose me as a presenter um, for um, an abundance challenge that's coming up in October. So that we're developing that protocol right now, that program, and it's going to be massively powerful. So 
excited to be part of that. If people are interested in learning more, they can always email me. So is the best way to find you through your website? wellnessmusictherapy.com it, it's a little it's a little outdated but okay. my but you can email me at wellnessmusictherapy. at yahoo.com okay and fa- i'm i'm very active on facebook on the music therapy and essential oils group and a couple of the spiritual groups on on that and yeah so i'm i'm definitely there and i have a, a I have a TV show, one episode on life to afterlife, which is on Amazon Prime. And um, that that interview will be coming out in the next month or two as well. And there's more in-depth information about what I heard when I was on the raft with Jesus and Buddha in a series on the Awake TV network that I, that I host. I'm so but, proud of you. <laughs> thank you. I'm very excited about all of these developments and and my opportunity to share, right? It's really wonderful. And what I like, and not that I don't like all my interviews with people, but this is something so different <laughs> that I've never <laughs> imagined. So it's like, yeah. oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's very different. It's it's very different. And I think that's indicative of how unique we can be, where people tend to shy away from wanting to create their own path because it may be different or look different or feel different to others. But in reality, our gift is our difference. Our gift is our uniqueness. So how can we bring our gifts into our purpose and make it something that no one's ever done or heard of before, right? Uh, Right. (laughs) But let's talk a little bit about purpose because I think a lot of people are looking for their purpose. Yes. What do you have to say about that? What's my purpose? How do I find out, Ellen? I think that when you have something that keeps you up at night, because it is so, it just takes up so much of your mind and heart space, that is one way to know. But another way to know is simply by surrendering to source and seeing what comes. And I know that sounds really ambiguous, but I find that if something is meant to be in an alignment with my purpose and feels like I'm doing good for others, if it just starts to unfold, I know it is right. And it takes a lot of trust. And I have that because of my own experience. But I would ask people to ask those questions. Where would you have me go? What would you have me do? What would you have me say? And to whom? And if you're living in a space in your career where you feel constricted, restricted, dark, cold, I would say you're not living in your purpose. So what can you do? What can you change? What can you make space for? Because sometimes we're so stuck in our day-to-day and we're using our career as our was thinking we we have to stay there. It takes up all of our time and energy and the universe has nowhere to give, nothing to give because there's no room for it. So I would just ask people to surrender, meditate, Reflect on what they love, what absolutely brings them passion they wake up doing. Raise your frequency as much as possible. Whatever practice you can do, even a 10-minute meditation every day or breathing the oils every morning or diffusing the oils, like that's an easy way to raise frequency. Listen to crystal bowls at night as you go to sleep. You know, these things will just help to open up the path to find that purpose. What's a crystal bowl and listening to? What does that mean? Is that an um, audio you listen to? It is. It would be kind of a recording. I have giant crystal singing bowls that are, you know, 20 inches large and they're different pitches and each pitch represents a different resonance in the body. So as you play them, your body resonates along with them. They were created for technology, oddly enough, but you've heard of the brass bowls, you know, the little brass singing bowls for, yeah. So these are a larger version of that made of quartz crystal. And they resonate at a much higher frequency and just a much much more visceral and somatic experience for the listener. And they do raise our frequency and frequency is something to pay attention to because our wellness line, right? When we are well, we have a higher frequency than when we are not well. So whatever we can do to kind of keep our bodies vibrating higher, I think is a powerful process. 
I bet you on YouTube we could look up crystal singing bowls. Oh, there's yeah. probably yeah. all yeah. kinds of things we can yeah. we can like. Yeah, and then as far as life purpose, I I never I, I used to think, oh, what's mine? You know, because I'd go from mm-hmm. job to job to job. And it's not really out there. It's something you're already doing, something you're already passionate about. Mm-hmm. And it could be in different ways. And, you know, for me, it just, I had that aha moment long before mm-hmm. I wrote my book or the radio show or anything like that. It's like, mm-hmm. I love researching not only mm-hmm. afterlife, but what's possible for living life. I love to share. Mm-hmm. I love to make a difference. And so those yeah. things, that's become my purpose. And it, yeah. And it takes on different forms. It just doesn't have to be one thing as we grow and learn. Um, mm-hmm. But I think really look to see everyone what it is that you enjoy. And yes. what lights you up, what lights yeah. you up. Yeah. And it, it's yeah. in that and it could be all kinds of flavors, all kinds of colors yes. of the rainbow and different ways yes. to do that. But there's only one you and yep. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have to be some spectacular write a book, start a radio show, anything like that. No. It can be your special way of making a difference with others. Cause, uh, exactly. Your unique gifts. And I think the only way to find that for us is to tap into our higher self. Right? So really, no one can answer that for other people. But you might be able to find someone, a practitioner, someone who works in this arena, that can help you to move inward and just listen. Because when we move in and we listen and we remember, all the answers, they just come to us. And sometimes we we don't know to look for them. So sometimes after an experience, while well, I lead people through this process of moving inward and connecting with their higher self, I tell them, pay attention to your dreams. Listen to song lyrics that you hear and over listen to smells and animals pay attention to whatever you notice write it down journal it for two weeks because it is your brain you've tapped into connecting an intention with the amygdala directly because i use the oils in my work and the ones that move into the brain so you've actually connected the brain to an intention so it's kind of working for you in the background over weeks where it's it's kind of saying hey do you hear that song over and over that you can't get out of your head think about the lyrics and what they mean they relate to your intention think about that dream you had last night write it down it's though that animal that you see over and over you haven't seen a hawk in months and now here one is, or a dolphin representing joy. So it's really just listening and being open and surrendering, connecting. Pretty amazing. This is one of these <laughs> that as soon as we're done, <laughs> I'm going to listen to again. Because it's oh, like, no. well, there's so much. I am, I've got a notebook in front of me. Oh, there's oh, no man. way I'm, I'm getting it all. <laughs> Do you have... I know um, in your bio, you talk about having an online course. If somebody would like to find out more about this, certainly we can join your group on Mm -hmm. Facebook and wait till your Mm -hmm. things come out on Amazon Prime and listen to uh, Awake TV. But how Mm -hmm. would we go about finding out more? So the course is on, there's one course on music therapy ed, and it's, it's meant for practitioners. You can receive continuing education credit as a music therapist or as a mental health practitioner, or if you just want to learn about it. Um, And it's, it talks about how to structure an imagery process and be a practitioner. If you're looking for more of a course that will help you to move through Mm -hmm. emotions or abundance or more spiritual work, those are the ones that I'm developing with the Jack Canfield team. I was part of uh, something that we called the emotional reset. It was 30 days of affirmations, visualizations, education, and a deep dive with the oils into different emotions. We use you know, we used all of that. And then the abundance will be meditations, heavily education-based, right? Um, so that would be something that you would want to reach out to me on Facebook about. And I'd make sure to connect people to that group or that uh, opportunity. Because we're the book for The Emotional Reset, Jack Campbell wrote the book and we did a beta group last month. It will be published soon. So, um, so again, that would be something or you could email me at wellnessmusictherapy at yahoo.com. Very, very nice. Mm-hmm. And for anyone listening right now, we put all these episodes on YouTube. And oh. in the description in YouTube, I can 
put and will put and probably mm-hmm. have them right there right now as you're listening, <laughs> the live links to look at some of this stuff if mm-hmm. this is yeah. anything you're interested in because it's different. Yeah. And we all want to believe that mm-hmm. we have a higher self and that we can connect with it. And I mm-hmm. know about quieting the mind and journaling mm-hmm. and things like that, but you're giving us a, a new <laughs> way to look at it. And I have never really thought about with frequencies, with the, the, whether singing bowls and the, yeah. um, the, the essential oils. And it's just right. like, wow, new stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. And, you know, at the core of every cell inside, mm-hmm. right, our cells, you think it's space, but guess what? It's vibration. We vibrate. Everything living on this planet vibrates at a frequency. And so to 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 leave that part out of who we are because you know that was another thing i was shown we are light beings we are vibratory light beings that are here for a reason we are here for a purpose every single one of us and living in a different trajectory and i was even kind of given the message that we choose our life and our families based on how much we can help others in this lifetime. And that's a little bit of an interesting idea, right? That we actually choose our parents because we may have a story to tell, we may have trauma and our life story may be getting, moving through that trauma, but also about helping others through that trauma and where we can go with it. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and I wanted to say also, before I forget that on my Instagram and then on my Facebook page, if you just look up my name, Ellen Wheelton, um, even if we're not connected as friends, I have some public singing bowl experiences where you can, you know, listen in and participate if you want to get a glimpse of my work as well. I love it. Mm-hmm. I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> oh, and let's just wrap this up a little bit about gratitude because I'm feel very grateful right now, but I'm assuming gratitude is something that raises that frequency. Oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely raises our frequency. I have found that the practice of gratitude is the most profoundly uh, spiritually transformative process that we can tap into day to day. It just, you can feel the swelling of your heart. If you're really living in gratitude, there's just no space for anything else. It's, it's profoundly beautiful. I had read a book called The Magic by the Rhonda Byrne Mm. who wrote The Secret. Ah. And it was a 28 day gratitude practice. Mm. And morning, noon, and night, there was something Mm -hmm, to be grateful mm -hmm. for and things to write Mm -hmm. down. But the, the key was you really had to feel it. Yes. And no yes. kidding, Ellen, stuff mm-hmm. started happening in my life mm-hmm. that I could only call miraculous. Yes. And I thought, what is going on? And, you know, there's all kinds of people write testimonials. And then mm-hmm. at, this was a couple, several years ago, and I shared it with some friends and they got the book or downloaded mm-hmm. it and they started doing it and they started reporting all these wild, wonderful things that were happening. Now, what's interesting is knowing that and doing it are two different things. Yes. It really takes something as a human being Mm -hmm. to say, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this a practice. Mm -hmm. But then, you know. It does. The results can be really outrageous. Well, you know, for the past three years, we've been leading these Abundance Challenge with my team. I have a team of light workers and music therapists and therapists and acupuncturists. We all come together usually through um, plant medicine and through the oils. That's kind of how we connect. And we've been using these meditative practices in abundance. Well, interestingly, you cannot manifest abundance without gratitude. So there's an oil called gratitude where they measured the frequency of the human body when it was grateful and then found a blend of plants that match that frequency. So we use that with journaling and feeling of the gratitude and then paired it with the abundance um, piece of I am abundant, I'm financially abundant, or whatever we say, we say affirmations multiple times a day with the abundance oil. But what's really fascinating that you that you tapped on 
tapped into here is that you need to pair the feeling with a thought. That's how we manifest things here. And I remember receiving that message as well, that when you pair a thought with a feeling, you manifest it, good or bad, because you know, source is always listening. And so, like you said, you were pairing the thought with the feeling and you were able to bring more gratitude into your life and more good things and more abundance, I'm sure, right? Yes, definitely. Yes, because that, so that I imagine that you were bringing in a lot of amazing, abundant things at that point. It was great. And, mm-hmm. You know, and it's silly that I ever stopped, but I just got back into the day-to-day life and so easy to forget these things. But, you know, I tell people, and I believe this, and yeah. I don't practice it 24-7, but when we cross this finish line called life, and mm-hmm. there we are in the afterlife, whatever you want to call it, heaven, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're, we're still souls. And, you know, you think yes. about communicating through thought and all these wonderful things that they mm-hmm. they can do in the afterlife mm-hmm. but it's like we're souls now and yes. like you <laughs> say our soul is so much bigger than our little body i mean it yeah. we it can really extend and mm-hmm. so we do have these powers if you want to call them available yes. you know yes. we do have time so things might not happen in a blink of the eye but like you say pair the feeling with the thought and mm-hmm. you know be careful what you wish for yeah exactly yeah hold it's on just tight. can you imagine if a hundred years ago we told people you're gonna have these little boxes that you put in your pocket where you can call someone on the other side of the world and see their picture no one would ever have believed Never. that, right? So what else is possible, right? I mean, we we limit ourselves in our thoughts and what we think is impossible. And that was the other message, another big one on the raft. We are capable of so much more than we even can conceive. So much more. We don't realize the power that we hold in able to create our, our future. That's pretty big. I'm writing it down. (laughs) Well, Ellen, it's been a delight talking to you today. You as well. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Any closing words? And then I'll say a few things. I would just say to practice daily connecting with your higher self and asking guidance daily. You know, where can I go? What can I do? What can I say? You know, I I think those are just crucial. And I think I learned them from Marianne Williamson, right? But just constantly be checking in and connecting because you're so much bigger than your human form. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank Mm -hmm. you. And you can find out more about Ellen on wellnessmusictherapy.com or Facebook and Instagram. And I want to say from me, (laughs) thank you for being here and listening to these episodes. This might be your first episode. And if it is, the good news and the bad news is there's over 300 more of them, almost (laughs) one for every day of the year, but all designed, you know, I got my start in this through grief and had to share what I've learned. And my gosh, there's so much really great evidence that Not only do we go on after life, this life, we, you know, these powerful souls that we are, but there's so much that we can experience here. And sometimes, unfortunately, through the toughest times, we get our biggest spiritual growth, but um, tap into that inner self, you know, um, and it's just wonderful. And I encourage everyone to listen to this episode again, because there's so much value. (laughs) Oh my gosh, and so many new things. Also, our home base for all past episodes is we don't die radio.com. If it's your first time there, there'll be a little pop up thing that says join the insiders club. That's simply my mailing list. And if you is I don't send you too much. um, And I was gonna say, too much spam. I don't send you any spam per se, any junk mail. It's all good things. But you'll also get a very healing audio called How to Survive Grief, which is near and dear to my heart. And then also says, read a few chapters of my book, We Don't Die. Here's the secret. It's the whole book. If you're someone who likes an audio book, there is a store section on that website. And if you um, find the audio book, just type in F-R-E-E, free as a coupon code, and you can listen to that for free. We also have a calendar there. And since we've been in 
locked down from COVID-19 and the world starting opening up again. We're doing all kinds of things online, uh, de- mediumship demonstrations of all kinds. We do a, a weekend Sunday service now on, on uh, Saturday, um, online courses that you can tap into your own psychic potential. I mean, just wild what we've been able to create, which has been really good. And we also have a Facebook group called We Don't Die Listeners. It's a great place to meet like-minded people and be supported, you know, because time, times can be tough. So in closing, my name is Sandra Champlain, and always so happy to be your host on We Don't Die Radio. I do believe that life is an education for the soul and that your life here on earth is important. You, my friend, are special. You are one of a kind. I really underlined on my notebook here, pairing feelings with thoughts. You know, um, if you think you can, or you think you can't, you're right. You know, as Henry Ford once said, but really pick, pluck out the, the weeds of the negative thoughts and, or see them as butterflies and just send them on their way and put in some positive. So thank you for listening and we'll see you soon. Mm-hmm.